Sunday. So we'll have our 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time Mass. And this will be prayed for uh, Rita Fishback. That's the Mass intention. And uh, we'll also have added our uh, choir. So we're able to have uh, not only 30% of the capacity of our church for Mass attendees, but also we'll have, to have uh, one uh, organist and uh, one cantor. So we'll have uh, one verse of our opening song, and then we'll have a closing song as well added to our Mass. If you please stand, we'll pray our prayer to our Lady Most together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We pray together. Mother Most Admirable, treasure of calm and serenity, we love her for the light of her Lord eyes, for the peace radiating from her countenance, for her whole being, which reveals her inner fullness of grace. She is the virgin of the invisible and of the essential. We ask her to detach us from the visible, to lead us on, to fix our gaze on the invisible, on which her eyes are fixed. The invisible presence, the invisible life, the invisible action, and the invisible love. In the midst of non-essentials, which invite and often beguile us, may she give us a right understanding of the essential and a hunger for it. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth with joy in your heart to celebrate this Mass. Thanks be to God. Never deprive of your guidance. Those you set firm. 
lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for our first reading. Hallelujah. 
spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord. And you also will testify. Sin, sickness, afflictions like the coronavirus. These are just a few of the evils that are mentioned by our Lord in the Our Father Prayer. The Our Father Prayer says, Father, 
deliver us from evil. This is the seventh and the final petition in the prayer. And so yes, Jesus teaches us to seek forgiveness of our sins. Yes, Jesus teaches us how to avoid temptation. Yes, Jesus teaches us how to forgive those who sin against us. Because remember, my friends, the only sin greater than your neighbor's sin against you, the only sin greater than your neighbor's sin against you is our sin. But in these final words of the Our Father prayer, Jesus tells us that we ought to pray to be safeguarded from evil. These would be the evils of the world that Jesus is talking about. The evils that Satan would love to inflict upon us. Now St. Thomas Aquinas took a bit of heat when the angelic doctor did exegesis on the Our Father prayer. Because St. Thomas said that God can prevent the occurrence of evil. He's God. Of course he can prevent all evil from occurring. But Thomas said that God does not often do this. His premise is that since all the saints of heaven were afflicted by the evils of the world, that if you try to live a good life, if you try to be holy and pious, if you try to live your life the way Jesus Christ lived his life, then Satan will come after you with a vengeance. If you remind Satan of Jesus Christ, look out. The devil is going to bombard you with evil after evil until you sin and lose your resemblance to God. St. Thomas said that this is what makes a man holy. So St. Thomas says, God could prevent all evil, but he does so very frequently. Because if God prevented all the evils, then we couldn't become saints. Do you see that? Well, let me tell you as your priest, God does prevent the occurrence of evil, and God does so quite often. We just don't recognize it. Remember I told you that our solar system is so unique because of how large a planet 
enough to destroy life on our planet. That's one of the theories of the destruction of dinosaurs, you know. That the Earth was hit by a large meteor, and the meteor wiped out all life on the planet. Mass extinction. One day, everything was fine in dinosaur land. The next day after the meteor hit, Father, to deliver you from the evil of the coronavirus. The world's out there looking for a cure. That's not the way evil is defeated. Evil can only be defeated by God himself. And it's up to you, Catholics, to beseech your Father in heaven to deliver us from evil. Are you doing that? The world is dependent on you. If you make yourself dependent on God,
given his most prized title, the title of Father, to others. These men that we call our fathers on earth, we must honor them because God gave them this most honored of all titles, and God gave these men power to protect us, to deliver us from earthly evils. We honor Dad today and every day of our lives because they're most worthy of our love. How many evils have our earthly fathers protected us from? We ever thank our dad enough for protecting us from a myriad of evils so that we can live and move and have our being in Jesus Christ. We will never know how many meteors Jupiter deflected from hitting the earth. And we will never know how many evils that God the Father prevented Satan from on us. And we will never know how many earthly evils our earthly father shielded us from. Just as we will never know how many evils our priest, Father Randy, prevented from striking our church. We stand a pleasure.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us, man and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. I, the Holy Spirit, was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, far good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of reconciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to be right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For we know that it belongs to your boundless glory, that you came to the aid of mortal beings with, with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord. 
until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving, this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession and your presence we rely from failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis and Pope and David our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to at their passing for this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for my sheep, says the Lord. We'll now pray the spiritual communion prayer of Alphonse Liguri, St. Alphonse Liguri, for our members of our church community that are watching the Mass from the safety of their home. And uh, remember, uh, the church asks that we be especially careful in receiving Holy 
communion, so if you don't feel comfortable, uh, you can just make a spiritual communion like those at home. But uh, the church would ask that uh, we come forward in a single file line, and just the priest will give communion. I'll wash my hands again, put my mask on. I have a consecrated host separate from the main celebrant host, so those hosts weren't in the path of my voice uh, to become contaminated. And uh, if uh, the church is asking us if you would please receive on the hand Holy Communion, uh, if you can't do that, you'd rather receive on the tongue, you just have to be extra careful. But uh, since you went to the communion line and the ushers will help us with that, uh, you can take your mask off and then receive on the hand. And then as soon as you eat our Lord, He's inside of your heart, then you put your mask right on. Let's pray our prayer of St. Alphonse of Liguri for that spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive Thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though Thou wert already there, I embrace Thee, and I unite myself wholly to Thee. Permit not that I shall ever be separated from Thee.
example of a truly Catholic life. Help them to bring up their children in love and fear of God. Bless all children that we may love, honor, and obey our fathers. We ask the Lord to bind our fathers more closely to their wives, and they promise to love, honor, and serve on their wedding day. We especially entrust all fathers to the loving care of their patron saint, the good Saint Joseph. And may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Father's Day. The rest of you would stand for our closing prayer. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion here on earth may be our sure pledge of redemption in heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few notes uh, so coming up this week, uh, on the 24th, which is a Wednesday, is the great feast of the Nativity of John the Baptist. I think I had uh, visions of grandeur of being able to pass out some firewood for those of you that have the bonfire on the eve of St. John's feast day, but uh, we'll have to do that another time. But uh, if you're a big fan of Christmas, that's uh, time to celebrate uh, this is uh, June 24th. Uh, Christmas is only six months away now, huh? Then uh, this coming Saturday uh, is the Feast of Our Lady of Perpetual Health, and so there'll be a special Mass uh, for the uh, church in Sublette. It'll be 11 o'clock, of course, at Our Lady of Perpetual Health's church. There'll be a Mass on Saturday next, and then we'll have, of course, the regular Masses on Saturday evening for the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Okay? I want to thank you for all coming to the Mass, and... Uh, not being afraid of the coronavirus. We've uh, uh, continued to uh, sanitize our churches after every Mass and to assure the bishops and uh, uh, health, and health people in the state legislature that we can celebrate the Mass safely. And so our churches, they can be filled to 30% uh, capacity. So I think we're still far cry from that, but um, we're up to have up to uh, a minimum of 20 people at our Masses here in West Brooklyn. And if families come even more. But we're just coming for the sacrament, so I have to ask you, uh, after Mass, the ushers will excuse us from the back of the church forward. So it's an anti fifo type of uh, expenditure from the church, but uh, they'll keep us within that six-foot uh, frame. So even in the, the church, we've had that six-foot social distancing, but we have to have that even in the parking lot. So we're asked to just get in our cars and go home and not to socialize. So we just came for the glory and the celebration of the Eucharist. Thank you for coming and hope to see you again uh, next week. The Lord be with you. Now bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. We'll give the special blessing through the intercession of St. Joseph. May God give the glory and the joy of St. Joseph, who has caused you to be strengthened by means of his outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Free through his intercession from present ills, may St. Joseph form you by his example of a holy way of life and make you ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen. And so that together with St. Joseph, you may take possession of the joy of the homeland, where a holy church rejoices that.